Hello again everyone and welcome back to our revision videos. This week we're looking at an inspector course and we're looking at my favourite part of the play which is the act one and it's the stage directions. Okay so the stage directions then are a way in which Priestley can reveal to any directors that are going to um, put the play on or to the readers who are reading the script of exactly sort of the setting in which the play takes place. Now, Priestley describes that it should take place um, in a fairly large suburban house. We see that it belongs to a prosperous manufacturer. Uh, the state on the stage it has good solid furniture of the period. The general effect is substantial and heavily comfortable, but not cosy and home-like. So first things first, the large suburban house reveals immediately that the Burling family enjoy a wealthy lifestyle. Okay. Suburban environments were very popular amongst businessmen in Edwardian society and their businesses were situated in inner cities, but the owners themselves lived on the outside. So they lived further away from the city and more towards the countryside. This obviously reinforces how uh, middle class members of society were keen to stay on the periphery. OK, and they did not want to be immersed in places or be around those they deemed inferior. And those people that they deem inferior are, in fact, the, their workers. OK, next, we've got um, Priestley describing that the Burling family have good, solid furniture of the period. Now, the solidity of this realistic set tells the audience that the events that are about to unfold on the stage um, are rooted in their historical um, sense of self, okay? It's also really important to note that the furniture with um, which the Burlings own are described as being of the period, okay? And this is Priestley revealing that the Burling family are keen to ensure that their house is filled with fashionable items, okay? And it's another way in which they build their facade for everybody on the outside. At first glance, they are in this scene, they are celebrating the engagement between Gerald and Sheila and they are acting really harmoniously because they're sharing a meal around the table, they're drinking alcohol, Mr Burling you know, gets up on his soapbox and delivers his speech which is full of self-importance and it's suggesting that the characters are close-knit and they're content in each other's company. But it's critical then to look at the phrase um, that Priestley uses and he says that the effect of the house is not cosy and it's not home-like. And what we see here as an audience or as, an, as a reader is this glimpse into the fact that the Burling family are not as um, comfortable with, with each other as they may seem on stage. OK, it's this idea that a middle class family are being presented as being rather distant with each other. And there's a real lack of um, emotional relationships. And what we see again is that the Burling family are using this house as a functionality rather than a place to nurture relationships. Talk about the lighting, OK? And again, I get to talk about my favourite part of the play, OK? So the lighting is described um, as being, um, it should be pink and intimate until the inspector arrives and then it should be harder and brighter. So the first thing that we need to cover is this idea that the pink hue to the lighting is revealing that rose tinted view with which the Burling family and people like them um, are afforded. OK, they are able to sort of um, maintain their insular lifestyle. OK, and there's no need for them to um, take interest in any sort of issues going on outside of their social bubble. We've also got the reference to the lighting being intimate. Now, intimate means where you are close with um, someone, you know, in close proximity or you're close in a relationship. And this sort of contradicts what I've just said about the house not being cosy and home-like, because there are no close-knit relationships in this family, as we 
are shown as the play goes on because um, they have no idea of each other's lives, what's going on in their lives. Mrs Burling isn't even aware that her son is um, a drunk. Um, so there are lots of like secrets that un are unravelled by the inspector. But what the intimacy in the lighting suggests is this idea that the middle class and the upper classes are so eager to maintain um, their insular and being inward looking and that they are keen to protect each other's indiscretions. So it's this idea that they they avoid sharing people's um, problems or moral corruption or anything like that and what I thought would be really interesting is to link that intimacy to the palace bar okay so the palace bar is used by Gerald, Eric and Alderman Megaty okay and it's the place that we know um where these men meet um prostitutes it's the you know a haunt of um these women of the town and it's this moment that we see where Priestley reveals sort of the sordid underbelly of Edwardian society. And it's this idea that obviously these three men visit the palace bar and I would be shocked if they weren't aware that they both they all frequented it. And it's this idea that they are maintaining that secrecy within the classes, which is what Priestley wants to disrupt and he wants to expose that to the audience. So therefore, using the preposition until is this moment for Priestley where he can reveal and expose the secrecy, the moral corruption um, of the middle and upper classes. OK, and that preposition until is highlighting the inspector's true purpose in the play. OK, and that purpose is to disrupt the comfort of the Burling family um, and what and they experience. And it's this idea to is it's to. Um, prevent them from experiencing that comfort um, in the future okay the lighting's then described as going harder and brighter okay now the choice of the dramatic change in lighting demonstrates Priestley's desire as I've just said to expose the hypocrisy the exploitation the moral corruption that is enacted by the middle class and the lighting change is symbolic of this discomfort that the family and the audience are going to feel. OK, I always imagine it as, as like an interrogation light where it's sort of forcing people to confess. And that's exactly what the inspector in this lighting is used to um, do by Priestley. And you can see why that's one of my favourite quotations is there is just so much you can say about just that simple choice by Priestley. It's so important to the, the core of his message within the whole play. Next thing I'd like us to look at is the materialistic items that are mentioned in the stage directions. You've got sort of two references here you've got Edna the parlour maid and she's clearing the table and then you've got this idea that she is um, removing the champagne glasses off the table and she's replacing them with a decanter of port a cigar box and cigarettes now you might wonder why is um why has miss put Edna down as a materialistic item okay and although she isn't an item and Priestley would be um disgusted at that suggestion is this idea that she actually does represent how the burnings use her as a commodity okay edna's position on the stage of her clearing the table her skilled movements and her servant's outfit mean that the initial tableau um emphasizes the visual contrast between the manual labor of the working classes and the idleness of the lounging Burlings who, OK, repeat um, that it's a very nice meal and they're revelling in this comfort of their suburban house. Edna is a clear indicator of the Burling family's wealth and her frequent presence in the state on the stage in the play is this continuous reminder of the plight of the working classes. OK, and it's this idea that they are supposed to be silenced, they're supposed to be submissive and they're supposed to be compliant. And that silenced part we see when Mrs Burling, which was in one of the previous videos, um, when she 
um, criticises Mr Burling for say, even having the gall to say thank you to the chef for the um, for the nice meal. The use of Edna on the stage as well also reminds the audience that the Burling family do not need to dirty their hands or sully their hands with basic menial tasks, OK? They have the wealth and the comfort to pay someone to do that for them. And it's additionally just another indication of how far removed they are from the understanding of the working classes and how the working class... Like, who the working classes are as human beings. And that ignorance of um, that understanding of who they are um, and that lack of empathy is exactly what Priestley wants to condemn throughout the play, okay, and to his 1945 audience. You've got to remember that by the time the audience are watching this play, they have lived through two world wars, so they've seen the beginnings of the rigid class systems being broken down by that. OK, and it's this reminder of um, to the audience of how Priestley is so adverse and wants everybody else to be adverse to going back to reinstating those really rigid class systems, because he is essentially saying that it's it's inhumane. OK, and then next we've got the um, actual materialistic items that are placed on the table. So we've got the removal of the champagne glasses, which is obviously indicative of the celebration um, that the Burling family are currently experiencing. And they're being replaced by a decanter of port, the cigar box and the cigarettes. OK, and essentially the use of these materialistic items is to just reveal that the Burlings have money. OK, these props indicate um, that they are all luxury items that are frequently or maybe not frequently used by the Burling family, but they are certainly enjoyed throughout this evening. Their costumes are also an indication of their wealth. OK, it's the sheer ostentatiousness of the decor, OK, in what is really a fairly large house, suggests that the family are putting on a facade, OK? And it's this idea that the Burling family are being shown to be determined to climb those social ladders by having these items displayed on the table in this showy manner, especially because, as we know, Gerald is the member of the upper class. So it's, again, probably for um, the benefit of Gerald to show off to Ger Gerald. And here, Priestley's criticising, OK, um, through this display of wealth, um, the sort of smug and um, arrogant nature of um, the middle classes who benefit from the cycle of capitalism. So there we have it. Um, nice short video for you all this week guys um, and I hope that really sort of opened your eyes up to how important the stage directions are in the play and inspector calls. I'll see you all next week for the next video.